Hello. Hello. I'm here before you for once. Yes, I'm a bit late. I had to do some shopping. It's the only chance I get during the lunch hour. It is a bit of a rush, isn't it? Yes, it is. When I saw you weren't here, I thought something must have happened. Oh, no, 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 nothing happened. It's just I had to do my shopping first. By the time I finish work in the evening, most of the shops are closed. I really think they ought to open later for people who work late. Oh, some of them do. Oh, yes, yeah, some of them do. On Thursdays, they stay open till 7, don't they, on Thursdays? And Fridays, sometimes. And Sundays. Mainly dress shops and big stores. And supermarkets. And Indians. But it isn't racist, is it? I shouldn't think so. Not if nobody's listening. All the others shut at half past five or six. What do? The shops. Even on Thursdays? Butchers are the worst. Sometimes they close all day. It's probably the BSC. I expect so. I suppose it'd be all right if you could do all your shopping on Thursdays for the whole week. Oh, well, I can't. I haven't got a deep freeze. Really? So I have to do my shopping from day to day. That does make it difficult. I did think of buying a deep freeze, but our kitchen's so small, I wouldn't know where to put it. Oh, what a shame. That's why I have to do my shopping in the lunch hour. Except on Thursdays, of course. We keep ours under the draining board. What? Our deep freeze. Oh, oh, we've got our tumble dryer there. Oh, isn't that a bit dangerous? No, why? Well, you might think it was a dishwasher and stick your crockery in it by mistake. I shouldn't think so. Perhaps if we'd had a dishwasher there for years and years and we changed it for a tumble dryer, we might, you know, by mistake, put, put the crockery... I'm glad you came. I got quite worried when I arrived here and saw you weren't here. You were always here first. I thought something must have happened. Oh, no. It's just shopping, boring old shopping. I wondered if you might be worried about me, actually. When I was in the butchers doing my shopping, I thought, I'd better hurry up because he might be worried. I was worried. There were so many things that can happen. It didn't occur to me you might be shopping. I always do my shopping before I meet you. But it's never made you late before. I mean, you're always here before me. That's why I was so worried. I thought something must have happened. Well, you see, I didn't leave the office till late, so I was late doing my shopping, and that's really why I'm late. Oh, I see. It wasn't just the shopping that made you late. No, it was leaving the office late that really made me late. Oh, I see. That explains it. I'm glad nothing happened to you. I was getting worried. Were you? Oh, yes. So many thoughts racing through my mind. It's always more worrying for the one that nothing's happened to than it is for the one that it's happened to. Because the one that it's happened to knows what's happened and isn't worried about it. Whereas the one that nothing's happened to doesn't know what's happened and can't help worrying in case something has happened. I was only two minutes late. Yes, but I didn't realise that. As you're always here before me, I never know how long you've been here before I get here. Never very long. Only if you're usually here half an hour before me, that would have made you 32 minutes late. Uh, no, I was only two minutes late. As it's turned out, yes. Did you get all your shopping? All except the liver. Didn't they have any? Yes, but it didn't look very nice. I got chops instead. He likes chops, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Chump chops, peas and chips, that's his favourite. What have you got today? Cheese and cucumber. I thought I'd have a change. I've got brawn. You had brawn last Tuesday. Did I? Yes, you said you thought you'd like a change. Oh, so I did, yes. There's something funny about brawn, isn't there? Yes, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Would you like that? Yes, have a plan. Exchange is no robbery. robbery. <laughs> <laughs> mm, very nice. Thank you. You make excellent sandwiches, if I may say so. <laughs> How'd you cut the bread so thin? I buy it already sliced. How clever. Women make different sandwiches than men, don't they? Look how thick mine are. Well, I think men should have thick sandwiches. I think it's more manly. I like a man who smokes a pipe, too. Didn't she make them this morning? The sandwiches? Yes. No, I left her in bed. How is she? Still the same. Still her back, is it? I think so. I didn't ask. I just made the sandwiches and left. I took her a cup of tea up, but she didn't answer, so I left it on the side. 
It's probably cold by now. You should have put a saucer over it. I can't think of everything. Will she be up when you get back? I don't expect so. When she gets back aches, she has to stay in bed all day, otherwise she gets migraine as well. What does the doctor say? He says there's nothing wrong with her. He's refused to come around anymore. Is she very much older than you? I don't know. She won't tell me. It must be very difficult for you. My sister comes around twice a week to clear up. No, I mean, with her. Oh, I don't see much of her, really. I've got me television. It's not too bad. Does she like television? Oh, yeah. Medical programmes, that's all. Doctors, nurses, hospitals, real ones. Oh, you mean like operations? Yes. Did you see that one about the heart operation last week? No, I missed that. I saw the brain operation. Oh, I didn't see that. Was it good? Excellent. It was my favourite. It's amazing what they can do these days, isn't it? It's incredible. They still can't find anything wrong with her. Perhaps there isn't anything wrong with her. That's unkind. You've never said anything unkind before. Did you mean to be unkind? You're usually such a kind person. I'm sorry. I just can't stand seeing you so unhappy. You're so kind and gentle, and she just takes advantage of it. Do you like brisket? Thank you. Is that your chump chop in there? Yes, it is. How did you know? The blood's coming through. If I were you, I'd turn it over. Put the bit where the blood's coming through on top, then it won't stain anything. You're so practical, aren't you? It won't hurt. There's potatoes underneath. It's always best to put the potatoes at the bottom, isn't it? A little trick of the trade, that. <laughs> I remember once, when I was a boy, I went shopping for my mother. And I put the eggs in first, and I went to the green grocers and had ten pounds of King Edwards emptied in on top of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. Did you get into trouble? Oh, yes. Did your mother often hit you? No, she didn't used to hit me at all. She was a very kind woman, my mother. She'd never hit me, never once in her whole life. She used to get me father to do it. She wouldn't look. She used to go out the room. She couldn't bear violence. She used to say, you wait till your father comes in. And then she'd tell him. And then she'd have to go out because she didn't like to hear me screaming. She'd go down to the church and cry in the back row. I caused her a lot of unhappiness like that. But she never reproached me for it, though. She was a very kind woman. See, the chop stopped bleeding now. Paper soaked all the blood up. Oh, good. You won't have to turn it over now. How many are there in there? Only one. Only one? You sure? It's a big parcel, isn't it? There's only one. Well, I wouldn't have believed it, a parcel that size. I would have said there were at least three in there. Well, there's only one. May I see it? What, have a look at it? If I may. His chop? Yes. If you like. My <laughs> goodness, that is a big one. That must be the biggest chump chop I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen some chump chops in my time. <laughs> Will he eat all that? Oh, yes, he'll eat it. And his chips and peas. He's a big man. It'd have to be to eat a chop that size. <laughs> he'll have a Dayton Sultana pudding after this. Really? Yes, and bread and cheese and butter. And he'll fall asleep. Does he still snore? Oh, it's getting worse. Especially since he had his teeth out. Gingivitis. You see? He lays on his back, you see. I don't know how I could stand it some nights. God knows I'm not snobbish, but my friends were right. A computer operative should never marry a lorry driver. You can't condemn all lorry drivers because of him. Yes, you're right. Does he know what you're doing? Does he know we meet in our lunch hour? Of course not. He could find out, you know. I've never breathed a word. He might suspect. He can't. I've never even hinted. He might talk in your sleep. He doesn't know. How can you be sure? I just know. Does she? No. She must never know. Neither of them must ever know. They wouldn't understand. Nobody would understand. If they found out, we would have to stop. And don't say that. It'd be awful to end now. We would have to. But immediately. You're so much stronger than I am. 
I so much look forward to this. I too. If it weren't for these lunch hours, I don't think I would want to carry on. I sit in my office watching the clock, waiting, wondering if you're going to be here. Knowing I'll be here. Couldn't you get a job nearer the park? We can meet every day. We can have it longer. You can still do your shopping. There's a butcher's not far away. Free range beef only. I'm sure you'd be very satisfied. His liver is very good. Oh, stop it. We mustn't. You know that. Yes, I know. If we were seen together every day, people would suspect. Do you think they would suspect? Of course. Then we'd have to meet somewhere else, undercover. And I'd hate it to be sordid. Out here, we're, we're in the open, and everything's so fresh and clean, with the birds and the trees and the wind. Do you like a bite? Finish my brisket. Mm, we haven't gone from this side. Yeah. It's a russet from my garden. Mind you, don't get a worm. They've all been attacked this year, I'm afraid. Look. There he is, look. He's crawled right down that little hole there. Well, half of him has. The little devil. Oh. Quarter past. Already. Time goes so quickly when we're together. I must go at half past. Can't you wait till 5 and 22? I must get back, I'll be late. You were two minutes late. I've already been late twice in the last week. It's very hard for a woman of my age to get another job. You're not old. I am. You're not. I am. Well, not as old as some people. <laughs> not as young as others. I always think of you as young. That's because you're older than me. I'm not. You are? I'm not. You are? I'm not. Well, one of us is. What? Older than the other. We've just had our first quarrel. Oh, my God, please forgive me. It was my fault. No, 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 don't apologize. Don't reproach yourself. You've made me very happy. Have you noticed when you don't bite into an apple for a little while, it goes brown? Yes, why is that? I don't know. I, I think the air gets to it. Hairs go brown, too. Oranges go dry. Blood goes dry and brown. I've noticed that when I cut myself. You've cut yourself? No, 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 not recently. Why, you worried for me? Yes. Cuts can be very nasty. Not if you have tetanus injections. I'm allergic to tetanus injections. I had one once. I came up in hives. Great lumps all over my face. I'm glad I never saw you covered in hives. I think I would have cried. They went down again. They gave me an adrenaline injection, but I was allergic to that as well. And in the end, they just left me alone. I would have thought they would have given you antihistamine pills. I'm resistant to antihistamine pills. I'm afraid if I ever get hives again, they'll just have to get better on their own. You must be careful not to cut yourself. I am. I always use an electric razor. Do you like electric razors? Yes, only the ones that go round and round, not the ones that go up and down. It all depends what kind of beard you have. My hair grows in different directions. Life can be very difficult. Have you thought of growing a beard? No, I tried that. It wasn't very good. It wouldn't grow where the hives had been. And besides, they wouldn't like it at the office. Not a patchy beard, not any sort of beard. Not at the Ministry of Defence. It's all right at the Admiralty. Then you have to get permission to shave it off. How is the MOD? I got promoted last week. Oh, I'm glad. You didn't tell me. It happened on Wednesday. I only see you on Tuesdays. You haven't been transferred? Oh, no. <gasps> I was afraid you'd be sent away. No, I've got the same desk. Are they very pleased with you? I don't know. Why did they promote you? It's my age. You always get promoted when you reach my age. What job do you do now? Not oh, just the same. I just get more money. Another 14 pounds, 28 pence a week. That doesn't seem very much. It's 742 pounds, 56 pence a year. Oh, I never thought of it like that. In five years, oh. it's 3,712 pounds and 80 pence. In 10 years, 7,425 pounds, 60 pence. In 20 years, 14,851 pounds, 20 pence. In 40 years, 29,702 pounds, 40 pence. In 80 years, 59,404 pounds and 80 pence. In 160 years, it's 118,809 pounds and 60 pence. You'll be able to buy that new house you want. No, it's gone up again. Mine's gone down. What should I do with this apple core? Throw it in the rubbish bin. There isn't one. I'll put it in your pocket. Make the lining damp. Throw it in the pond. I might hit a fish. Maybe the water will break its small little float. The ducks will eat it. 
Do ducks eat apples? See? Worms. All right, then. I'll give it a try. <laughs> You're right. It is floating. Yes, I said it would. Have you thrown apple cores in ponds before, then? Yes, they always float. Ducks are swimming towards it. Which one's going to get to it first? That one. No, no, I think that one. Oh, yes, you're right. <laughs> you have done this before, haven't you? Look, he's got it in his mouth. Look, there. It's gone. <laughs> no more. Try the serpentine. Do you know that a man living in Aberdeen gets twice as much radiation as a man living in Edinburgh? No, I didn't know that. Did you learn that at the Ministry? No, I saw it on television. You've got a television? Yes. It's a deep freeze I haven't got, remember? That's why I have to do my shopping from day to day instead of on Thursdays when the shops are open late. Yes, that's right. Cluid gets quite a lot too. And Cumbria. Cluid has the heaviest rainfall in Wales and that's why. The pubs are open on Sunday in Wales now. It's the granite. It retains much more natural radiation than other subsoils. Oh, would you believe it? That duck has just spat the apple core out. Spat? Two ducks spit? Well, swans hiss. They can break a dog's leg with their wing. I had a Jack Russell once. A swan got hold of it, held its head underwater, and it drowned. Several people standing around applauded. I think it ate the worm. Well, that's something. It's nearly 25 past. Already? We only have five more minutes left. Seven? You were two minutes late. We've got so much to talk about. Let's make the most of the little time we have left. Yes. Let's talk about us. Do you think that's wise? No, but let's do it anyway. What are we going to do? What's going to happen to us? I don't know. Don't you think I haven't thought about it over and over again? May I hold your hand? But no. People are looking. I'll put a newspaper over them. Can I take your glove off? Oh, this is madness. Just for one moment. Just one brief moment. What tiny hands you have. Oh, dear. You've got a hole in two fingers. Naughty girl. You pull them off of your teeth. <laughs> How much longer can we go on like this? It's been ten years now. Ten of the happiest years of my life. Ten years of just meeting for one lunch hour each week. Has it really been ten years? Ten years next week. It's our tenth anniversary next Tuesday. I'll bring a cake, shall I? That'd be nice. I want some candles. You always think of things like that. Ten years. This is the first time I've ever held your hand. Oh, and a knife. Don't forget to bring a knife. Ten years. Do you remember that first shy meeting? Oh, yes. Yes. We spoke for the whole lunch hour about nothing in particular. How different things are now. We sat on this same bench, further apart. And now I'm holding your hand. I must go. No, no, no. We still have a few minutes left. I want you. I want you to know there were no regrets on my part. Regrets? Regrets. I entered this with my eyes open. I knew what it could lead to. You've done nothing to be ashamed of. They'd never believe us. I led you into this. No, I wanted to be led. And when it comes out, let's come out at will, and the finger of scorn is pointed at both of us. I want you to know I would do it all again. Oh, thank you for saying that. Oh. Oh. What? What are those pills for? You're, you're, not, you're not ill, are you? Indigestion. Oh. Brawn always gives me indigestion. You must be more careful. You, your sandwich is too fast. you better put your glove back on. Careful you don't pull it too hard. Your fingers will poke through the holes. Oh, it's so peaceful. Yes. Beautiful. White Horse seems so far from here. One could almost be in Constantinople. Or Damascus. 
or Baghdad, Basra, the ancient port of Tyre where the Phoenicians sailed in with spices and silks from Cathay in India, where Alexander the Great swept oh, look, through there's the... there's an ice cream man. Would you like one? Oh, I better not, it's too cold. I'll get a corn it, then I'll bite the end off and make you a little one. <gasps> oh, he's gone now. Damn. So beautiful in the park this time of year. What's that lorry doing over there? Where? Well, Westminster Council written on the side in a big pipe at the back. Oh, they stick that down the drain holes and suck all the sludge up. What a good idea. They have a big job, don't they, Westminster Council? Oh, there's hundreds of lorries like that, sucking sludge up all day long. I had no idea there was so much sludge in London. It's a big city. Where do our cities? Unfortunately, there is sludge. Do you think there was sludge in Basra? I hope not. It would spoil it somehow. Naples smells, I've been told. So does Venice. Just shows you how important sludge lorries are. Half past one. You'd better go. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Shakespeare? I believe so. I must read him again. He's very good. Don't forget your shopping. I've already done it, remember? That's why I was late. No, I mean your chump chop. Oh, that. I almost forgot. There it is. Thank you. You manage? Yes. It's not too heavy? No, I can manage. Have you thought of getting it delivered? They only deliver once a week and I haven't got a deep freeze. I must go, I'll be late. Yes. Will I see you next week? Yes, of course. And if you're late again, I won't worry. Won't you? I'll know you're doing your shopping. As long as I know where you are, I won't worry. It was not knowing that made me worry. I thought something must have happened. No, nothing happened. Only I was worried. Just shopping, boring old shopping. You must go. It's getting late. Yes. I hope the chump chops a success. Thank you. Goodbye. Not goodbye. Au revoir. French? Yes. Do you speak it? Un petit peu. I thought they were little peas. Oh, well. Back to the MOD. Yes. Goodbye. See you next Tuesday. Haven't you forgotten something? Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry. It's all there. Thank you. I'll take that. What's the meaning of this? Geoffrey Tupper? Yes. Sarah Tiptree? Yes. Police, special branch. Incoming missile defence systems? It's all there. This is outrageous. All right, come on. Where are you taking us? To the nearest police station, where you will both be formally charged under the Official Secrets Act. I wonder if you keep both our names out of this thing. Both this lady and I are married. Not to each other. Not that we've done anything to be ashamed of. We're just good friends, but our families wouldn't understand. I wonder, could we have that chump job delivered to this lady's husband? You see, he's a long-distance lorry driver and he'll be waiting for his tea. 